Ladies and gentlemen, here we are. We made Songs it. Songs with Strangers, the podcast episode trois. Yeah, that's three for all you English speakers. On du trois. Trois. We're so excited. This podcast, we meet somebody that we've never met before, which is typically how meeting someone works. <laughs> we meet someone for the very first time. We get to know their story and we write a song about them all in under an hour. It is basically the improv podcast of songwriting. That's it. Because I'll tell you what, I don't know much, but I do know but I we know have. A, <laughs> I don't know much. <laughs> I don't know much, but I do know we have a new song that we're about to write. Yeah. And it will be done within an hour. Because we have to pick up children from school. Because I got a doctor's appointment <laughs> for my he's Adderall. Got a doctor's appointment. <laughs> So, Why can't they just give me Adderall? Like, you see me, like, every month I need babe, to come in. Just from the past 30 seconds of you talking, do you not understand why they need to check you before they give you more Adderall? No, I feel like by the last 30 <laughs> seconds of me talking, they should just hand it to me. So, like, you're good, dude. So, they just take it. You need <laughs> you're this. fine. You need, you need this, sir. Yeah. Let's give you this. By the way, we're using Riverside.fm, our first sponsor. We're so excited. We paid for the premium package <laughs> with our own money. Yeah. And uh, we're very excited. Riverside.fm hosting us here for this podcast for full price. Yep. And we accidentally named our studio incorrectly, and it is named that forever. It's not Johnny <laughs> Swim's podcast studio. It is John T. Swim's <laughs> podcast studio. Whoops. <laughs> So, just want to welcome everybody to John T. Swim's Songs of Strangers. Uh, <laughs> hey, this is our first episode. We got Jonathan Grant Berlin, hey! audio engineer. He heard that last episode with the electric he guitar said, this was like crap, basic so. noise and said, how do I fix this? And we said, Jonathan, help us. Help. Jonathan, today's your day to make us better, as is every day. So, we're very yeah. excited to have Jonathan. We always have the, uh, the aforementioned, oh, maybe I haven't mentioned her, the amazing, the illustrious, the hair cutterist. Yeah. Amy, Amy with that new haircut. She got a French girl haircut. Hey, listen, guys, she's still single. Um, still single, but the standards are very high. So, who we who we writing with today? We write with Meg. Tell me about Meg, babe. Okay, I'm going to tell you about Meg. So you know, we look through all all of the um, what are they called? Submissions. We look through all these submissions. And, you know, there's a lot of similarities in stories sometimes. There's, you know, people that have fallen in love to our music or people that have gone through a hardship. Um, and so you're kind of looking at the story overall, obviously, before we pick these. Um, like last week, it was, you know, kind of the story overall. It, it was actually the only breakup submission that we got. But it was also like keywords that stood out to us. And um, there was a little bit of a keyword here. So Meg wrote us and said, I am a quote unquote bright side minded girl who married her junior high crush at the age of 19, had seven babies, celebrated 20 years of marriage for the cracks in my shiny armor bust mm. open, and the discovery of all the tenderness and trauma of my childhood demanded to be seen. She actually said horrific trauma, but that feels like heavy. So I, I skipped that word. Um, the process of finding the precious magic of my young self was locked away with the brokenness um, has been as beautiful as it has been awful. Still in the thick of it, but my God, is it something special. Uh, and so I... I think we saw that and we saw f the first thing that stuck out of my head was a bright side minded girl, which I mm. just thought that alone was like spoke to me. And I'm excited to speak with her and she has seven babies. So like, uh, God give me Shit. the energy of Meg already because Lord knows three has me tired. All right, let's do it. Meg is in the lobby. <clears throat> I'm going to let her Meg. in. Meg. Meg. Yay! <laughs> Meg. 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 Meg Meg, 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 Meg. Meg, what a pleasure to meet you. I'm excited to be here. Oh my goodness. Where are you? I am near Jackson, Tennessee. Oh, classic. We're Iconic going to even. Jackson. <laughs> Meg, I am so grateful. We're so grateful that you're here with us today. We loved your, uh, your, Letter, what do we call it? Submission. Yeah, we were intrigued by your submission, and so we okay. figured I don't we even would remember love. what I wrote. So <laughs> okay, you wrote that you're a bright side minded kind of girl. That you married your yes. junior high crush. Mm -hmm. That you celebrated twenty years of marriage. That you have seven children. Which oh. wow. Okay, yeah. His sister has oh, seven children. Crazy. I've seen it firsthand, and it's oh. like <laughs> I you you look so well rested. And so I have other questions about that. 
Um, like how? It's really good makeup. <laughs> oh, I need to send me some links. Maybe they'll sponsor the next episode and I'll actually look awake for there it. There we go. Um, like and that. that you, after a while, there were some cracks in the armor and you started realizing there was a lot of underlying trauma and it's just been a hard but beautiful thing. Yes. Do you want to tell yeah. us more about that? Uh, as much as you feel yeah, comfortable, so- you know. Yeah, I was like, okay, don't overshare. This is really (laughs) Listen, we have a great therapist who's trained us, basically, to listen, so. Yeah, so everything, you know, I leaned heavily on uh, religious upbringing, you know, quote the scripture. Right. You know, uh, whatever doesn't kill you makes you stronger. All Mm -hmm. of those types of things, you know, to get through. Um, you know, because having seven kids and yeah. additionally, my husband went back to school after we had six of them. Oh, wow. And so we were in like this just right. super intense. intense season. But it wasn't until last year that I realized like there's zero yeah. Bible verses. There's zero right. quotes that are that are getting me through. Like yeah. I mm. could not. And what I ended up in therapy Yay, mm-hmm. therapy. Yay, therapy. Yeah, therapy. Therapy. Um, <laughs> Another sponsor of this episode, therapy. Yeah. What I learned was that I had just been like, oh, here's this younger part of me that's got all this stuff. Mm-hmm. And I keep telling her to be quiet. Right. And hey, look at the flowers are blooming. Right. Like right. you can be quiet because let's look, focus look on these things. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. I, so I don't know if you've heard of IFS, but it's a type of internal family system. So what it stands for. And it's just this idea that inside of us, we have family systems just Mm. like we do outside of us. Okay. And so I have met multiple parts, as they call it, that are really just uh, who I was when specific traumas happened. Right. Mm. So like I had some trauma when I was three. I had some trauma when I was 14. And so these parts, I have silenced for a really long time. Yeah. Like I've gotten Mm. mad. Like, why are you being so immature, Meg? Right. Ooh. Oh, because it's a, you know, it's a right. three-year-old. Because 14 right. year old still got stuff to work out. Yeah. And I keep ignoring her and wow. trying to use all of these, like, positive right. affirmations. We call it spiritual to... bypassing at yeah. our house. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We call it spiritual bypassing where, yeah. like, you can, uh, like, I grew up Southern Baptist. <clears throat> I still, I, uh, we have a strong faith system foundation in this house, in our marriage, in our family. Uh, much of the bathwater that I was raised in has been absolutely flushed out of the system. However, the baby remains. Uh, yes. I grew up I in a place where it's like, that. if you ever, therapy was like cussing. Therapy might as well be going like, it was there with like getting divorced or I don't know. Or not being It white. was like, <laughs> like therapy was a really you're like a, you're not good, good. enough. Really. You're not trusting right. God. I think ultimately it comes down to not trusting God enough or you're not, you got, yeah. brother, you just got to hide yourself behind a cross, brother. Have you laid that at the feet of Jesus? Oh, Lord. I don't know mercy. what that means, man. <laughs> I don't know what you think that means either. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. So I'm going to say yes. I've laid that at the feet of Jesus. And I don't know what I'm telling you by saying that. You know what I mean? Like there's a, we call it spiritual bypassing. We have all, we have these fancy terminologies and we witness it still to this day a lot. Uh, and it's, it's maybe triggering for us, but it's also, it's, it's, uh, it's like an alert for us. You know, not quite a trigger all the time, but sometimes it just reminds us where we came from and, and pitfalls that, that got us so many times in the early stages of our marriage, growing up, like leaving home, taking chances. Our life is, you know, making music together. It's one constant yeah. risk after another. We've made a life out of risk really more than anything. It's risk that we've made yeah. a life out of. And it's just, it, it becomes impossible to hide behind these kind of de facto statements. And I don't things. think that's like yeah. anything, like I don't think that's a way to be human. You know, that's not what we're, like called to be mm. we're not supposed to be just like shoving things away that's not like blessed are those who mourn mm. not those who like spiritually bypass not those who just kind of go you know what god is good and i'm just grateful for all these other things and so i don't have to i don't have to feel sad about it blessed are those who mourn yeah. you gotta yeah. get you gotta feel it but i think also when you're oh a mom gosh, of seven yes. kids there pro- probably feels like there's not the right time to Ooh. like when do you have time to feel things and like let yourself feel things and so on top of just you know on top of just dealing with it yourself there's also like constantly a distraction that keeps you from you know I- even letting yourself go there because you're like i can't i don't i don't i got time for that you know until it forces yeah. you to has that has that felt yes, true for you and that's you? exactly what happened uh, yeah yeah exactly I was yeah sure like i was that. pushing through right. i was you know i i homeschool some of my kids yeah yep. um my and so like seven kids just, homeschools as well thank you 
going and doing all the things until right. I can't. Like I, I stopped being able to even do a grocery order. Wow. Like, you know, scroll on my phone, right. pick the yeah. groceries. Yeah. Like yeah. that's like the easiest form of grocery shopping. And right. I was like, I couldn't make my brain do it. 100%. Yeah. And, um, and so I was just really forced into stopping. I, yeah. I, mean, I had to stop like all the things. Right. And, um, and I've just honestly, in the last couple of months, started having some capacity. Right. It's been a year, because um, it was January last year, uh -huh. that like I just ceased to function. Yeah. And it was terrifying because I'm I, I'm judging myself. Right, right? of Going, course. Hello, you're a grown freaking woman. Right, 100%. You have responsibilities. But it's really been in giving voice to mm -hmm. these younger parts. And um, oh my gosh, there's so much I could tell you about like my internal world. It is so freaking rich. I could just yeah. disappear into, right. like I have, I have intentionally imagined beautiful places mm. to, so I have somewhere to go. Right, like safe um, places. Because- you know, mm. I love my home. I love my children, but it's freaking chaos. Yeah, and right. So, exactly. Mm. Like I throw these headphones on, uh -huh. and noise canceling. Like, Goodbye, and, everyone. Um, yeah, mommy's and in I Spain. Go into my, <laughs> I go like? into my my spaces. I would love Meg to ask you to take a minute and to. I would love to be invited into one of these places in your inner world, and I would love for you to just describe it to me. However, however and, you feel comfortable, whatever words come to mind, I would just love yeah. to uh, to be shown a picture of this of one of these places you can escape to that you go to. Um, so my my main escape is my island. Mm -hmm. um, it is not a tropical island because I am like a woodsy, cozy girl. So it is an island in Maine. Oh, cute! And I love this. So I'm also going like, to start going there in my brain. Oh my gosh, it's it's wonderful. So yeah. um, I actually do this, like I'll say, um, shout out to my therapist for all these skills that I have now. Um, when I start to get like, ah, oh, I feel crazy, right. I can literally say my right. island and like I can imagine myself right. there. Um, and like one of the things she said is when I go, like notice something new. And so uh -huh. I have built it each wow. time, like yeah. noticing something new. Um, and so like... And it's the idea with the island is it's my safe place and mm -hmm. I get to just say who comes. Mm -hmm. And so like there's a dock so people can come and visit my oh, island. But they got to go home. But also, I yeah, exactly. Uh -huh. yeah. Ship them off. If they I can meet. Right. Well, and I can meet people on the mainland. Right. Right. Like my island is, is sacred. Right. Um, and so there's some people I don't allow in. Yeah. Um, you know, I've learned that they will come and they'll just wreak havoc on my island. Right. So. Ooh. I'll go meet yeah. them, but um, it's, you know, it's woodsy. It smells like fur. Oh, oh I love it's it. It's perpetually fall. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> There's a, you, you always know, need a sweater. Uh, yes. I've got uh, Adirondack chairs with a wool blanket. I'm right. so like, you know, classic, like right. campiness. Um, I love it. One of the things with the, that my therapist has taught us is like tapping into older, wiser self. Mm. Oh. And older, wiser self is like, for me, the way I perceive her is like all of this mess of the world that like, I'm still trying to figure out. She's figured it out already. Right. Like her connection to cool. spirit is like, mm, right. where I'm over here going, oh, ah, uh, yeah. you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. And, um, and so it's, it's like this version of me that is so much, you know, wiser. Right. And, um, and so she is the matriarch of my internal family I system. I call her Gran. Mm -hmm. I'm like really intentional right now about resting. Right. Um, and so I have devised up Camp Gran, oh. where all of my younger oh, parts oh, oh, oh. are at Camp Gran I on the island that. right oh. now. <laughs> wow. And like at one point I was like, I want this island. Like I'm going to, someday right. I'm going to buy an island right. in Maine and I'm going to make like, this place. I have it. Like, but I, I have can't it. guarantee it's safe. Right. right. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. maybe I'll just keep it in my mind where yeah. I know. You know? That's oh. amazing. So, I love that. I had, um when when I was about to turn 40, I kept seeing this picture of myself as an 80 year old and like mm -hmm. I could like feel what she felt like. And it was like, I could see like that she had this like wisdom and peace. And like, I, I, I could feel like what it felt like to be this like mature version of me. And it would just pop Isn't in my it? head randomly. It wasn't something that I was like trying to see. It was just like kept coming to my head. And at the same time, what kept coming into my head was me as an eight year old. And when I was eight, I sucked my mm -hmm. thumb still or when I was seven. 
And I would pray all the time, like, God, please, like, let me stop sucking my thumb. Like, I'm too old for this. And I would still suck my thumb. And then the day before my eighth birthday, I was like, God, I'm about to be eight. Like, hook a sister up. Woke up the next day, never sucked my thumb again. Wasn't even tempted to. It was just, like, done. Like, I was just done. And I was like, so it was my first miracle when I was eight. And some friends of ours that are therapists, they said that there is something in, like, the therapy world... Or in the, I guess, like the psychology. Yeah. And, and it's like the and Russian. It sounds not like this IFS. Exactly. That's what I was thinking. It, that it's like the Russian doll thing, like all the versions of ourselves. But they were like, you know, when you reach like around the age of 40, you're supposed to go to like your younger self at like eight and your older self at like 80 and like see what they mm-hmm. have to teach you. And so the thing that I was, because I too had like a really crazy year last year health wise and I was in. But this time last year, I was like barely getting out of bed. Um, and so I understand the, the the thought of like, oh my gosh, having to order something feels insanely hard for me right now. Yeah. I know that feeling yeah. like viscerally. Um, and so I would sit there and the 80 year old self was like, you know, had been through a lot and had survived. And she had this great strength and great peace. And so she was imparting that. And then the younger version of myself was hyping me up like, girl, Miracles happen. I stopped sucking my thumb, you know? Yeah. So it was like my first miracle. Those ages that they were like, oh, cl- like think about what you learned at these eight or what you learned at eight and like what it feels like to be the older version of you and like let those two kind of inform where you are now. And for me, it was miracles Miracles can happen. And also like hardship happens and you make it through and you're somehow like beautiful and wiser and mm. you move more slowly mm. and gracefully through the world. You're not like as hectic and frantic. You're like, you can take it yeah. all in. And so I, I, I connect with what you're yes. saying in so many ways. <laughs> and I feel like with all this stuff that there's like, it all feels like surgery, right? Like it feels like it's going to kill you. And there's really, oh my gosh, there's yes. really like a centimeter I, difference, you know? Yeah. I've said multiple times as stuff you know the traumas specifically mm-hmm. that have come up like i'm gonna i feel like i'm gonna die yeah yeah and yeah. my therapist is like hey, that's that's a part right that's a younger part because she doesn't know safety right uh. and like just so now i get to show up for her that's my right. favorite part is i don't need to depend on anybody else and not that we right. don't need people right but of course, yeah i don't have to depend on anybody else for my safety like i right. get to show up for myself and it's so fun like to see you know like you said this younger version and this older version right and like they interact with each other in this this world i've created and and this like tenderness towards and so uh these younger parts and um you know grieving you talked about the grief like allowing myself to grieve has been like, I mean, I have right. ugly crap, uh-huh. you know, <laughs> just girl. You should have seen his I pants kept... yesterday at therapy because I was laying on his lap, just <laughs> and I was like, so sorry about your pants that people are going to think you wet yourself now. That was just my wife's tears. I just at my knee. Yeah. Let me, let me um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it all feels like surgery, right? Like it all feels like is, am yes. I getting stabbed or am I getting healed? I don't know. Uh, let me say right. this real quick. Meg, yeah. I think we are, I speak for all of us in this room to say we are so lucky to have you today. I'm so excited. I want to start writing because I'm, I'm, I am thrilled. I'm thrilled to have gotten to meet you today, to, to hear a bit of your story. And I'm th- thrilled to write a song with you. Are you, are you down to write a song together? Yes, I'm All excited. Right. I don't know if you know this, we're Johnny Swim. We write songs for a living. We perform them. <laughs> this is our podcast. You're the third guest we've had. Songs of Strangers, episode three. We're writing a song with Meg, and we're going to be done in an hour because I've got a doctor's appointment. Yes. That's going to give hey, me Adderall. Me too. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> I've got to go pick up our preschooler. So. And uh, Amanda and I were talking about you this morning. We, we, were reading, uh, we were reading your submission as we were dropping the kids off. She was reading. I was driving. Stay safe out there, folks. Uh, <laughs> and we were talking about it. And she's like, I just keep thinking about surgery. I keep thinking about how painful and how really dangerous surgery is. The sharpest knives in the world. The sharpest utensils, these scalpels that can, that, uh, uh, that, that can be one centimeter away from changing your life for the better and one centimeter the other way would ruin your life forever. And that's the, that narrow, that knife's edge that we, that we live in truly. And when you, and especially when you allow yourself to feel the things that are hard, it's like, you're just putting yourself under the knife, you know? Mm. Yeah. So Amanda. And allowing things to come up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. We've talked about this a lot the last several (laughs) weeks. We talk about blessed are those who mourn. We believe there's a difference between suffering and mourning. Suffering's going to happen. You're going to break your arm. Somebody can hit you with a bat in the leg and that's going to hurt. You're going to suffer. Lose people. Yeah. You're going to lose people. Things are going to happen that are out of your control. But to mourn is to choose to not spiritually bypass, to choose 
not to only stare at the sun because I need to find something brighter to look at so that I can ignore this thing. Our therapist says a lot, what you resist persists. You have to make room just as much as you have to make room for hope. You have to make room for the possibility of better things ahead. You also have to make room for the way you feel right now, for that suffering you feel right now, for the mourning you feel. I remember going, uh, what do we do this, EMDR? Yeah. <clears throat> we do EMDR therapy. Mm. And in EMDR therapy, I saw myself at three years old. I had a traumatic experience happen when I was three. And I saw this little dude and he was holding the teddy bear. And the teddy bear's name was Shame. And there was this, it felt like I was actually like on psilocybin or something crazy. Because it was so real and so beautiful. So as I think about your internal family system, I think about not just how wonderful and wondrous that is, but how real that is and the real healing and the beauty that comes through it. And I am excited, excited to put some melody to this. Mm -hmm. If you're down, let's get to it. I've always been a bright side Mind the kind of girl I never thought the time was right I get inside my world And even when I'm hanging on and on and on I made a choice or two I still want to Started, I'm already all in my field. <laughs> good, that's a good point. Do you like that as a first verse? I mean, or, or first part of the verse? Just that hide the darker world just oh. hits. Ugh. Okay. Okay, good. Okay. Yeah. Like, I've written uh, not well, mind you, but some pretty dark poetry, you yeah, know? I love that. Because this, it's, and there's always like this little thread of hope in it, right. but mm. still. Folks that are like, oh, that's yeah. real dark. Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, that's real so life, I'm baby. Like, I've kept it to myself, you know? Right. So. I like that. Okay, so. I've always, always been a bright side. Mind you kind of girl. I always kept my smile wide. Hide a darker world. Something in the hand I don't know what we're here. I've made a choice or two that so I don't know. To get me to who I am, yeah. to get me like to get me. We said, uh, always been a, always been a bright minded side, always been a bright side minded kind of girl. Uh, I, I used it as uh, something to hide a darker world. I, I used it to avoid. Is that? Uh, so I think hide. I mean to hide. hide yeah. yeah, yeah, that's it. What did we say? Yeah, world? I mean it was hiding from the everyone and right. myself. Right. You know, mm. oh, like yeah, I oh. couldn't. I couldn't do it. Even right. though I was writing dark poetry. Yeah. yeah. Like that's where it would come out. <laughs> Always been yeah. a bright side minded kind of girl. What's the top of that next line? Oh, is it again about some I, hard I, dark world? I said something about keep keeping a smile wide, but I don't keep know. A, keep a smile wide. Hide a dark world. Yeah, it's nice. And something over here. Um. So yes. you said, you started to say, I want to know. Yeah. And just like, I want to know what's underneath what's there. Home. Oh, I Maybe. like that. Yeah. I, I want to know what's home. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, I like that too, because it's like, it's a discovery process. It's a... Yeah. You can say on and on. You've been kind of mumbling on and on, and that's kind of nice right there. Uh mm -hmm. And it, it, it goes on and on, if I don't know, if I don't know, if I don't know, if I don't know, it could go on and on, if I don't know, to make a choice or two. Maybe it'll, it, it could go, uh, yeah. it would go on and on, and on and on, if I make a choice or two, it, 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 what, what, I want to know, know, I want to home. 
can say what's home for now, but we can yeah. always say I want a home later yeah. as well. Uh, uh, sand in a sandbox. Sand in a sandbox. In my facade. We always say sand in a sand sandbox. Mm-hmm. Like, we're not building castles yet. We're just getting sand in the box. Let's go. So when I allowed myself to really grieve, really, it was at, at Christmas time. When I just, like, gut-wrenching grieved, mm-hmm. it was the most magical Christmas I've ever had. Aww. Like, I have been trying to fabricate magic. Right. Right. For as long Ooh. as I can remember and always Ooh. disappointed. And then this year, like I grieved so deeply and like it was the magic I would been hoping for all along. Mm. So wherever that is. Because you could finally feel later, things. You weren't like, Yeah, like you know, I was able to feel could... the depth of grief right. and like this heightened joy. Right. You like, weren't numbing. And so it wasn't fake anymore. Right. I right? love that. It wasn't the mask of joy and bright sidedness. It was right. like authentic. It was like real finally. joy. Finally. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. I've always been a bright side minded kind of girl. Always kept my smile wide. Hide a darker world. And even if it on and on goes on and on, I still made a choice or two because I want to know. What's home? And yeah, the tide was rising and beating at my door. Yeah. And never seems the times right to feel a little more. Yeah, 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 yeah. Stop, stop. The tide was rising and beating at my door. It never seems the times right to feel a little to more. To feel a little more. To like let yourself feel. Yes. It never feel. It never seems the times right. It never seems. Sorry, go. The time's right to feel a little more. To feel a little more. And even if you hang on, yeah, hold on. I can't remember. I still want to know. Yeah, I want to know, know, know. I still want to know. Maybe this is longer. Oh, oh. I want to know. I want a home. I want a home. Yeah, it's great. So, real quick, uh, what if it was, it, it was something about it? It wasn't to speak to what you just said. Yeah. That it wasn't like the faking the magic. It was going through right. grief that helped me uh, feel the reality of the magic I was always uh, fabricating. Something about it to catch the on and on rhyme yeah. from the verse verse. What if it was? It wasn't holding on. Like something about it wasn't holding on that saved me. It was letting go. Yeah. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Meg, do you like that? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> she doesn't like it, but it's okay. And <laughs> uh, so, uh, what did I say? He said, "The tides rising and beating at my door, it never seemed the time was right to feel a little more. And even after, but after all this time, I finally learned it nothing. You can't get you can't get far by holding on. It's by letting go, go." I'm letting go. I want to know what's home. So repeat it. I like the double. The double. Do the double, and maybe it's letting go. It catches the letting go in the first part. And How then... do we feel about letting go? Does that. So. I feel resistance. I don't know how long this is going to go, but like the idea of like starting with I want to know home, then letting go and like doubling that, letting go, letting go, and then maybe come back to finding like home. Yeah. yeah. If you come back to it a third time, yeah, I don't we, know. Will, we will come back to yeah. it. And I think she says it immediately too. She'll say, uh, "Yeah, let so it go, let it I wouldn't go. worry about trying to fit home into this one. I okay. like the flow of go, letting go twice. Okay, okay. It's like e- emphasizing that. Okay. <laughs> um, so maybe if I let myself just bleed a little, maybe have a chance that I might heal a little. Woo! Good. There's always been a real short, uh, there's always been a real small line, a centimeter of the knife. Yeah. The difference between. Are you recording any of this? Yeah. What? Sure. I don't know where it goes after that. And I'm more than just a girl who's always on, who's up, who takes a sap, takes a hind, the 
bright side. I'm no ordinary girl just looking at the bright side. And I'm more than all the pieces left behind. I'm no ordinary girl that you see. I don't know how to get there. I'm more than all the pieces. I'm more than all the pieces left behind. I'm more than just the girl who looks alive. I'm Maybe it's just I'm I'm Meg, you're the poet, so but I'm more than all the pieces left behind. I'm like I'm more than just the girl that's all always rides I need to find an eye rhyme. The bright the side bri- who, yeah, who always Who always finds I'm more than just the girl oh, who, who finds the bright find. side. Oh yeah, there you go. I'm more I'm more than all the pieces left behind whoops more than all the pieces left behind. And I'm more than just a girl who always finds Woo! the bright side. Jeez, old Pete, man. Do you see what it's like to be married to this woman? Yo. <laughs> Do you see the adventures? Oh, oh my what gosh. a dream. I was over here. I had my coffee. I've got my water. I did not bring tissues. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Real quick, while we were, while I was making coffee, yeah. we had a conversation off camera yeah. about the bridge. Oh and yeah. I just want to write down what we were saying. Okay. Uh, we were saying something about like I close my eyes. Mm. I close my eyes. I see I see the ferns. You know whatever we, we described the island in Maine. I see the ferns. I smell I smell the, the I smell the the chimney smoke. But ultimately, where we want to land at the end of the bridge, and I'm just saying this out loud so we can get back to it when we get there. I close my eyes. I see the ferns, I smell the chimneys, I whatever. We just, real descriptive bridge about what we see on the island. But then it lands mm-hmm. and I see, I see me. I see more of me. I see more of me. And it's literal, but maybe that's just for us to know. I see more of me and I like what I see. I like that ending of the bridge. I see more of me. And I know it's a lot of see, but when it's on purpose, you yeah. say what you want to say. I see more of me. Say what you need to say. Say what you need to say. As the poet John Mayer once said, say what you need to say. 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 Honestly, he taught us all a lesson. Say what you need to say. So, I don't know. I know you guys are trying not to overdo the home thing, but like even like I see more of me. I see home even. Like bringing that back because like I am home in myself. Mm-hmm. You know right, what we could like, do too is it, it like we could uh, that could be back then here yeah 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 and so uh, yeah because it could land it I see more of me and I like what I see I see home I see home, I see home. yeah and then of course all right I mean get... honestly that could be yeah I was gonna say that could be for that uh, so Wait, so uh, something uh, something in the magic in these walls. May the darks are dark, but the technicolor's awesome. <laughs> Can we rhyme <laughs> walls and awesome? Yeah. We're rappers. We're rappers. I see the fog. Mm, the fog there's magic, is magic in these walls. All right, hold on. How do we, how do we get into that? Yeah. Uh, you'd be surprised to find there's magic in these walls. I'm, I'm, you'd be surprised. I, uh, or I was surprised to find. Oh. I was surprised to find there's magic in these walls In the darks, the darks To the darks, the darks Something about the the colors are brighter But the colors leave you in awe Uh, You'd be surprised I was surprised to find there's magic in these walls Show the darks, show the darks are darker But the darks are really in awe The the colors live in awe uh, I'm so like, intrigued, like how this will hit other people, because it's like so full of meaning welcome. for me. Yeah. <laughs> That's welcome. That's literally our life. Welcome. One hundred percent. And sometimes you're sometimes like, sometimes people get something that's completely different than what you intended, and that's cool. That's what they needed. Or they that's think they it's got. funny, and they're like, "Haha, that song's funny," and you're like, "Yes, it's my life, but okay." Um, or or the ones that like don't matter at all to us are like, "That really hit home," and you're like, "I actually don't like that song," <laughs> and. <laughs> I, it was not autobiographical in any way. It was just an exercise of so, songwriting. We met you 90 minutes ago, and we are okay. so inspired by your story, by the little piece 
that we've been able to uh, that you've been able to share with us over this brief amount of time we've had together. But we're in awe of you, uh, an amazing mother, amazing wife, seven kids, so you're an amazing teacher, homeschooling them babies. And it is a privilege and an honor to get to write this song with you. Mostly you and Amanda, but I was here too. And, uh, <laughs> and this is the very first premiere performance of a song we wrote together, Meg, Abner, and Amanda, Ma, called The Bright Side. Here we go. I've always been a bright side minded kind of girl. I always kept my smile wide to hide a darker world. I could have let the cheap facade go on and on, but I've made a choice or two, cause I want to know what's home. Till the tide was rising and beating at my door. It never seemed the time was right to feel a little more And after all these years I finally found I'm not safe by holding on But by letting go, I'm letting go I want to know what's home Cause maybe if I let myself just bleed a little Oh, maybe, or oh, just maybe I can heal a little There's always been a real thin line A centimeter of the knife Between killing you and keeping you alive I'm more than just the pieces left behind I'm more than just the girl that always finds The bright side Sure, the room's a little small, but there's magic in these walls. The darks are pretty dark, but the colors keep me on. And I shudder now to think about if I'd skipped a choice or two. Cause I gotta know where's home. Yeah, and I know, I know I'm home. And maybe if I let myself just bleed a little And maybe, or just maybe I can heal a little There's always been a real thin line A centimeter of the night Between killing you and keeping you alive And I'm more than just the pieces left behind I'm more than just the girl who always finds the bright side.
right side. Yeah! First try! First 12th try! <laughs> First try! First 12th try! Slash, uh, I messed up the bridge. It's fine. Ladies and gentlemen, we it's got on this great. call with, uh, with Meg just under two hours ago. Yeah, hour and 45 minutes ago. And I'm proud to say we got to know her. We wrote a song. And I am in awe of Meg, you, your story, your resilience, your, your ability to share the story, which I think speaks so much to, uh, to your actual your healing and the point of the journey you're in. You know what I mean? To be able to talk about it so freely and so eloquently. And uh, I'm also so in awe of my wife who can freaking write her tail off my <laughs> gosh so Meg you'll be hearing from us we just wrote a song together it'll be out in the ether on Monday when people are watching this it is Monday yeah on our newest episode of Songs of Strangers listen to it in your car make sure you buckle up drive safe drink commissary coffee buy it at full price Meg <laughs> we love you we're grateful for you from Burbank to outside of Jackson thank you so much yeah from Burbank to Jackson <laughs> we are sending our love Meg, thank you so much. Thank you. You have a great rest of your fun. day. You guys are awesome. You're, You're awesome. awesome. All right, we out, Meg. Thank you. Holler. That was a delightful experience. <sighs> Therapeutic for all. I really feel like I just had a little bit of therapy. Now I want to go sit and imagine myself in my own safe world. Yeah, this, this sounds like the right thing to do. Mine would probably be this room. I love this room. Mine would be in your arms. Oh, dang. Mm, but also with snacks. I'm gonna love you like nobody will with a couple snacks and a bottle of beer. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I am hot and sweaty from watching Amanda be amazing. Uh, from Burbank, California, right here in our little office, studio, gym, den, TV room, extra bathroom, guest room, to you, wherever you are, much love, a happy Songs with Strangers episode three to you and to all who observe. The Much holiday. love. Uh, Jonathan Grant Berlin, shout Yay. out on the ones and twos. And reminding me to use the microphone. Amanda Marie microphone. Waters, producing it. Waters. I'm Abner, that's Amanda Grace. We're Giant Swim, thanks for watching Songs with Strangers, y'all. Thanks for listening. Like and subscribe, like and subscribe, because like you, you have to say those things. And like and subscribe, and our kids go to private school. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's called uh, independent school now. Yeah. Less bougie. All right, we out.